that cardiomyopathy uh, can be regarded as a, a term uh, that will depict a syndrome. So any affection of uh, myocardium may be called cardiomyopathy. Uh, um, and uh, in that case, uh, cardiomyopathy will be the equivalent of the term heart failure or just well, affection of myocardium. Uh, so that will be a syndrome uh, that will represent any affection of myocardium within, for instance, clinical presentation of valvular heart disease, clinical presentation of ischemic heart disease, uh, um, well, any overload of, of, um, of uh, myocardium. Uh, and on the other hand, there may be, again, initial affection of myocardium um, uh, that is not related to any other uh, affection of heart valves, of coronary arteries, and so on. Uh, so uh, if you will see the, the term cardiomyopathy somewhere in the textbook or, or doctor's manual, please try to understand what is meant under that. Uh, uh, if it's primarily, it means that it's its initial disease that definitely will result in affection of uh, myocardial properties. Or uh, this term is used uh, as equivalent to syndrome of heart failure within the uh, uh, um, larger, uh, larger symptomatic. So, um, if we talk about primary cardiomyopathies, most of them are, are initial, are genetic, mm, that will be affected, uh, that will be related to, for instance, uh, a severe uh, inborn, uh, typically uh, hereditary mm, uh, uh, hypertrophy of myocardium. It may be related to mutation of certain genes. It may be related to the affection of genes, but it will be uh, some kind of larger entity like glycogen storage disease and along with heart, there may be affection, for instance, of, uh, of the liver, uh, of the bowel. Uh, uh, it may be mitochondrial disease. Again, uh, it, uh, it will be associated not only to affection of the heart, Again, typically liver will be affected, but in that case, there will be uh, um, uh, well, initial damage of myocardium without any uh, predisposing damage of endocardium or coronary arteries. Um, dilated cardiomyopathy is another uh, inborn genetic entity. Mm, and sometimes, again, as you see in that ca uh, case, there may be acquired cases and uh, um, here lies again the trap. Uh, uh, that classification, myocarditis, is listed within primary cardiomyopathy. That's not quite correct. So myocarditis definitely will result in a function of myocardium, but in that case, it should not be related as primary disease. It should be secondary. Uh, Takasuba. Uh, that is uh, a stress-provoked affection of myocardium when myocardium will uh, uh, change its shape uh, and uh, uh, will be will, uh, restructured uh, in the shape of some kind of a trap for uh, octopuses. Uh, uh, that, that is the, the, the Japanese term, the, that's uh, uh, the significance of Takatsuba term. And that is bizarre shape of uh, myocardium, typically of myocardium only of the left ventricle. Sometimes it may be associated to pregnancy, it may be peripartal, it may be associated to tachycardia and so on. So please uh, be aware that in that case, you should not call uh, that uh, those cases as primarily. Primarily should be genetic. Uh, those genetic uh, cardiomyopathies inborn without any established cause. Uh, cardiomyopathies will be subclassified according to what will happen to myocardium. Again, uh, by definition, uh, if you say that a patient is having primary cardiomyopathy, there should be no established cause uh, for that disease. That's how you will uh, diagnose primary cardiomyopathy. Uh, there should be no toxicity, there should be no inflammation, there should be no initial uh, um, coronary failure or initial damage of heart valves. Uh, and then, according to the shape of the heart, uh, you will subclassify those cases to dilated cardiomyopathy when there will be a, a, a restructuring of myocardium and the uh, heart in the patient uh, will become larger. Uh, in most of the cases, there will be most predominant affection of, uh, of the left ventricle. 
that will become uh, uh, widened, that will become dilated. Um, and uh, uh, that's how the heart will look like in that case. Sorry. Uh, um, so as shown here, uh, there is biventricular function, but uh, predominant will be the change in the left ventricle in most of the cases. Uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Uh, we were talking about uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy uh, in the class devoted to valvular heart disease. And I hope you will uh, tell me now um, what kind of uh, affection will happen in, in, in that case. Um, who can tell me? Any ideas? Which valvular heart disease will be associated to um, to hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. No ideas. No messages in the chat, pity. Um, if patient will develop hypertrophy exclusively of the outlet of the left ventricle, uh, patient will develop aortic stenosis. That will be called uh, uh, isolated hypertrophic sub-aortic stenosis. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, that disease we discussed within our class uh, devoted to uh, uh, aortic valvular heart disease. Uh, anyhow, um, uh, in most of the cases, uh, there will be again a predominant affection of the myocardium of the left ventricle. Uh, right ventricle may be involved, but typically in lesser degree, and it will be less obvious. Um, uh, atria typically will not be affected at all. And uh, another disease, uh, another type of uh, uh, cardiomyopathies will be the affection of uh, endocardium. Uh, the disease uh, uh, is usually exclusively uh, will affect uh, left ventricle. Mm, right ventricle uh, typically is never affected at all. And uh, mm, uh, the disease will result in a very unusual type of myocardial disease. There will be uh, almost exclusively diastatic dysfunction of the heart that we'll discuss at the uh, end of today's class. Uh, good, uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Uh, that's what will happen to myocardium. Uh, you see that there is a severe thickening uh, of uh, myocardium, mostly of the left ventricle. Uh, right ventricle, in that case, is affected, but it mostly the septum. Uh, most of the septal part uh, in between the ventricles will be involved. And uh, if we will pay attention to the free wall of the right ventricle, it's almost unchanged. Just a very, very mild thickening of the right ventricular myocardium. Uh, talking about the left ventricle, uh, first, it will be hypertrophed. Uh, second, it will be hypertrophed without any uh, pre-existing established cause. So patient will have no, let's say, uh, mitral incompetence, no aortic valvular heart disease, no essential um, hypertension. And in that case, uh, you see that patient is, is having severe uh, uncontrolled, uh, in uh, many cases, initially asymptomatic hypertrophy of the left ventricle. That's how you diagnose uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Uh, in many cases, a uh, patient will have uh, will have a significant uh, bizarre type of uh, uh, arrangement of, uh, of uh, cardiomyocytes. Um, let me raise. Uh, 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 in contrast to normal uh, regular lining of cardiomyocytes in, in, uh, uh, in the left ventricle, uh, if you take myocardial biopsy, you'll see that uh, there is significant disarray of cardiomyocytes that are located chaotically. Uh, and uh, it means that uh, no matter that left ventricle is hypertrophed, uh, first, uh, if you take the biopsy, you'll be able to differentiate that type of hypertrophy from normal myocardium. Uh, uh, therefore, sometimes if you don't understand what to do and what's going on in the patient's heart, if you're in doubt whether it's a primary hypertrophy, if it's a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or it's hypertrophy in response to some kind of uh, 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 another issue, 
you may take the biopsy of myocardium and you may diagnose that disease by the data of uh, myocardial histology. Mm, second, uh, the contractility of myocardium uh, sometimes will be significantly impaired. No matter that there is hypertrophy, uh, that is not normal myocardium, that is initial uh, disease of, of the heart muscle. Uh, why that is important? Uh, because uh, um, in that case, there will be no hope that if you're able uh, to compensate the, 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 the um, hemodynamics within the heart, hemodynamics uh, throughout of the body, uh, patient will improve. Uh, dilated cardiomyopathy. Again, uh, you see huge dilation uh, of the left ventricular cavity. The thickness of myocardium is mildly decreased. It's thin. Um, uh, right ventricle is affected, but in significantly lesser degree. Again, there is thinning of the right ventricular myocardium. Um, and in that case, first again, there is no uh, pre-existing myocardial disease. Uh, in a patient's past history, you, you'll be unable to find out anything uh, that will be the, the possible explanation for affection of uh, a patient's heart muscle. Mm, no toxicity. Uh, definitely needs to uh, talk to a patient very thoroughly, trying to understand uh, what happened in patient's life uh, and uh, uh, whether the patient maybe had alcohol abuse. So that's uh, quite common, uh, at least in, in European countries, in, in Russia, uh, that patient may uh, take possibly uh, toxic doses of alcohol for, for myocardium. Uh, and in that case, again, uh, there is a, a quite simple and quite uh, uh, useful from the clinical point of view test. Uh, uh, if patient is uh, uh, taking alcohol and uh, the toxic doses uh, the, the, the um, current time, and he'll be able to persuade patient to stop that, there'll be dramatic improvement uh, of uh, patients. First, uh, myocardial function. Second, in uh, uh, the, the, the structure of myocardium. Uh, the patient's heart will significantly, rapidly, within months, uh, uh, improve. That will be uh, first, again, uh, evaluated by the clinical symptoms, by, by physical signs, and uh, that may be uh, verified by first data of ECOCG or data of MRI. Um, there will be no such significant improvement, even if a patient is primarily with uh, genetic cardiomyopathy uh, uh, is taking alcohol as well. If patient will stop drinking, uh, nothing will happen to the patient's myocardium if it's genetic. Uh, second, in past history of your patient will be no occupational hazards uh, that again may be possibly uh, toxic for, for, for patient's myocardium. By the way, please pay attention how huge uh, the, the, the enlargement of uh, myocardium is in that patient uh, according to MRI of the heart. Um, that is, as far as I see, a T2 stage of uh, T2 weighted images um, and uh, uh, bright uh, uh, images uh, represent the, the, the fluid in the body, in, in aorta, in the cavities of the heart. Uh, heart occupies most of the, the, the left side of the chest, extremely large uh, left ventricle, almost no space for the left lung. Uh, right ventricle is also enlarged. Again, uh, uh, if uh, uh, we'll require the, the proof of diagnosis, if we'll take the biopsy, in contrast to normal regular lining of cardiomyocytes uh, in the heart, you'll see that uh, there'll be bizarre uh, chaotic uh, distribution of cardiomyocytes. They may be hypertrophed, uh, they'll be abnormal nuclei, mm -hmm. and there may be proliferation of interstitium. So there may be some kind, uh, some degree of fibrosis. But the point is that uh, besides of fibrotic changes that definitely may develop in, in patient uh, after, for instance, myocarditis, in the case of toxic injury of the heart, mm -hmm. there will be a disarray of cardiomyocytes, there will be impairment or the shape uh, uh, and interrelation of cardiomyocytes in the comparison to normal heart. And that is restrictive cardiomyopathies. So uh, what is, is, is striking definitely is what happens to the patient's atria. They're enormous, they're larger than the normal ventricles. 
uh, I, well, never saw such, such an atrium in the patients, for instance, in the autopsies of our patients uh, in the morgue. Um, and uh, the, the endocardium in the left ventricle is not a thick, uh, the, from the point of view of assessment of the macroscopy, but there is huge fibrosis of subendocardial portions of, of, of the left ventricle. Uh, there is some degree of hypertrophy of the left ventricle or the septum. Mm, uh, right ventricle is just dilated. Uh, but again, if you'll take the, the biopsy, if you'll take the, the histology uh, of uh, endocardium or the left ventricle that may be done uh, um, uh, uh, well, uh, in a living patient, and that definitely may be done at the autopsy, uh, you'll see severe fibrosis around uh, cardiomyocytes in uh, uh, subendocardial uh, portions of, of the left ventricle. Well, uh, the establishment of diagnosis is necessary because of the only adequate treatment of cardiomyopathies uh, is uh, um, uh, cardiac transplantation. So no matter what kind of uh, genetic lesion, genetic fault is, is having, whether it's restrictive cardiomyopathy as in that woman, or um, uh, uh, whether it's its other types, the earlier uh, you'll transplant a patient's heart, the better will be the outcome. So better it will be done uh, on the stage and patient had no symptoms. Uh, there is no overload of the lesser circle of circulation. Uh, there is no remodeling, uh, secondary remodeling of the heart. Um, and that's why we were talking about uh, uh, myocardial biopsy. So uh, uh, when uh, everything will be obvious to be too late to transplant the heart, because in that case, there will be secondary changes in lesser circle at least in lesser circles, sometimes in greater circle circulation. Mm, uh, and uh, uh, at the stage when patient will be symptomatic, there will be no such, uh, uh, well, the, the, the beneficial effect of cardiac transplantation. If we do that, uh, that's extremely severe uh, surgery, that, that, that's definitely surgery that will be associated to significant trauma for the patient, it's quite expensive. Uh, but point is that there will be uh, um, uh, no significant improvement of patient's prognosis and uh, uh, not, uh, not such a significant prolongation of expected uh, life uh, lifespan. Uh, um, that's why we need to diagnose those cases. That's why uh, we need to take the biopsy and do that as early as, as, as possible. Uh, myocarditis. Myocarditis is another entity that, that, that may result in, uh, um, in the heart failure. And in many cases, maybe of uh, viral etiology. Uh, quite a lot of viruses may affect myocardium. It may be Coxsackie virus, it may be influenza virus, it may be some uh, adenoviruses. Um, sometimes rubella in uh, periodic patients may affect myocardium. Uh, sometimes uh, bacterial toxins, typically not bacteria themselves, but their toxins, as may happen in carine bacteria diphtheria. Uh, some chlamydia may affect myocardium rickettsia. Um, quite rarely, at least in a European population, maybe of protozoal origin, for instance, in the case of invasion of uh, trypanosoma or toxoplasma. Mm, and again, uh, quite rarely helminths may result in affection of myocardium, for instance. In Siberia, it may be uh, a kinococcal affection, it may be trichinosis, it may be uh, schistospasmosis, uh, somatosis, uh, lava migrants may call that. Uh, sometimes it may be associated to stings uh, of some insects uh, or, or spiders. Uh, it may be the, the venom of wasp, it may be spider venom, scorpio venom, Mm, uh, for instance, black video uh, uh, may uh, result uh, stink, uh, uh, in result of toxicity <laughs> that may affect myocardium as well. Uh, talking about chemical causes of myocarditis, uh, uh, we need to uh, again talk about some kind of issues in definition in approach. Uh, I told you that a patient may develop a toxic affection of myocardium. 
that will be the, the dystrophy of the myocardial Please turn off the microphone. Um, myocardial dystrophy uh, may result, uh, uh, maybe due to affection, uh, by chronic intake of alcohol, by chronic exposure to the lead. Um, but point is that uh, um, uh, 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 sometimes uh, toxicity of alcohol, toxicity of the lead, may result in development of myocarditis. So how to differentiate? Quite easy. So if we talk about uh, chronic exposure, if, if we talk about some kind of uh, long-term event that will result gradually uh, in dilation of myocardium with development of chronic heart failure, in that case, we'll call that uh, myocardial dystrophy. If that will be the first, uh, well, acute exposure, acute toxic uh, uh, intake, for instance, of alcohol, or some kind of acute exposure to, to toxic factors, and uh, acute uh, damage of myocardium with the release of myocardial enzymes, you'll call that myocarditis. Uh, uh, this may happen in the case of uh, um, uh, this may happen uh, for patients uh, uh, that will take some emetine. Uh, chloroquine, by the way, uh, uh, we uh, well nowadays are talking all the time about uh, chloroquine and its analogs. Mm, that are used for prophylaxis or malaria, and uh, uh, they're used well nowadays uh, for treatment of patients with coronavirus uh, infection. Again, uh, um, we don't know precisely exactly uh, what will be the action of chloroquine uh, on viral metabolism. Uh, we think that uh, it will have some specific antiviral action. You know, we use chloroquine as a modulator uh, of immune response in a patient, so trying uh, to use a drug again as indirect modulator of uh, cytokine, uh, cytokine storm. But point is that uh, that drug uh, is, is having cardiotoxic effect. And again, uh, if, for instance, your patient will, will just will recently take the, the chloroquine and there will be some acute uh, changes in myocardial function, elevation of myocardial enzymes and elongation of Q2, uh, QT interval, uh, in that case you will say that patient is having myocarditis uh, that is drug-induced. Uh, if it will be something in the past history uh, and uh, your patient is having um, no signs of ongoing myocardial damage, uh, just dilation of myocardium. In most of the cases, you'll diagnose myocardial dystrophy in that patient. Uh, physical factors. Same for that. Uh, radiation. Uh, radiation, in many cases, uh, may result in just development of fibrosis of myocardium, uh, sclerosing of coronary arteries, and it may result in development of uh, um, uh, uh, some sclerosing of uh, endocardium. Uh, it may result in uh, um, uh, sclerosis of the heart valves, uh, causing development of aortic stenosis, of pulmonic valve, or uh, tricuspid stenosis sometimes. Uh, but um, there will be acute damage, for instance, if your patient is just well ongoing uh, the uh, radiation exposure for treatment of lymphoma. Uh, or tumoma or any secondaries, uh, intermediastinal lymph nodes, for instance, for breast cancer, lung cancer, or well, secondaries of stomach, colorectal cancer in the chest. And uh, right now, patient is having elevated myocardial enzymes and uh, some acute signs of heart failure. Uh, in that case, you'll say that patient is having, uh, is having myocarditis. Uh, temperature, uh, quite rarely. It may be sometimes some trauma uh, that will be associated to surgery, by the way, uh, if you apply artificial hypothermia for the heart um, uh, during the, the, the surgical procedure. Or it may be some kind of uh, uh, other uh, situations when patients have heat stroke um, that may result in development of acute damage of, of myocardial sites. Uh, from the point of view of pathogenesis of myocarditis, uh, we need to uh, differentiate two types of myocardial damage. It may be affected uh, directly by the viruses, 
uh, when virus uh, will cause a direct affection of uh, uh, myocardiocytes, and you'll see that there will be elevation of proponin. Mm, uh, but in many cases, uh, mediation of the damage uh, will be through a patient's immunity. There will be uh, some kind of uh, uh, impaired uh, immune response. Uh, you, you can assess that by change in typically T2 or T1 uh, lymphocytes. And uh, in that case, uh, there will be production by uh, plasma cells of uh, anti-myosin uh, antibodies that will be the direct damaging factor in development of myocarditis. So it may be, well, uh, two types of, uh, um, uh, of the damage when there will be uh, sometimes uh, uh, much more um, significant affection by autoimmune response than by the virus itself. Sometimes there may be molecular uh, mimicry uh, of the viruses and there will be cross-reactivity uh, of antibodies against virus and against myocardium. Mm -hmm. But typically it will be uh, antibodies that will be released against myocardium that is already damaged uh, with some kind of, of uh, um, impaired antigenic properties. Uh, in the course of myocarditis, we need to define uh, two type uh, um, uh, two type of, of, of the stages of, of, of affection. It will be acute stage, uh, that is uh, um, well presence of active virus in the body, uh, virus infection that may cause myocardial necrosis. Uh, but then it may uh, induce activation of the macrophages. Uh, uh, um, of expression of cytokines like interleukin-1, interleukin-2, definitely as in many other uh, um, uh, viral diseases, um, viral infections. Again, same as for, for, for instance, coronavirus, uh, pathogenesis will be overactivation of tumor necrosis factor alpha. Um, sometimes uh, there may be uh, overproduction of interferon gamma, uh, and that may denote progression to second stage that is mostly mediated by the, the patient's immunity. There will be overproduction of natural killer cells uh, that will cause the, the damage of a patient's myocardium. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, well, there will be some kind of a balance between neutralizing antibodies and damaging antibodies. Uh, typically, that will be the end uh, of the, the, the uh, viral infection. Uh, that will be the stage of viral clearance. Mm, but in many cases, a disease may progress to third stage, to chronic myocarditis. Typically, uh, that will happen already in the absence of the virus. Um, that means that uh, inflammation of myocardium will progress. Uh, patient uh, will develop alone with direct destruction of cardiomyocytes, um, a significant degree of fibrosis, and uh, that will uh, determine the, the uh, progression of chronic myocarditis. It will be the replacement of active cardiomyocytes by uh, fibrotic tissue, by distichial tissue. Patient will develop significant dilation of, of, um, of the heart, of the ventricles. Uh, and as a result, will be, again, uh, uh, that is not disease. That is a syndrome of uh, dilated cardiomyopathy. Mm, uh, uh, and definitely patient will have uh, this or that degree of congested, uh, con uh, congestive heart failure with mostly systolic um, failure of the heart. What to do uh, from the point of view of diagnostics of the patient? Definitely take patient's history, uh, uh, ask patient about possible contacts to patients who, who is inf uh, infected um, uh, by, uh, by the virus. Uh, uh, definitely, we need to, to find out that the patient is having inflammation because uh, that is uh, myocarditis mm -hmm. and there should be some inflammatory uh, syndromes, uh, syndrome components like um, well, uh, clinical signs, elevation of body temperature. Uh, in total blood count, there should be elevation of leukocyte count. In many cases, there may be isnephilia. Uh, in some cases, there may be decreased level of uh, uh, lymphocytes. Um, uh, uh, sometimes maybe alteration of platelets count. Sometimes uh, there will be significant decrease uh, in the uh, um, uh, count of platelets. There may be elevation of ESR and there may be elevation of 
C-reactive protein. Sometimes if you uh, have a, uh, the ability to test, there may be elevation of, of the title of interleukin one, two, and maybe six. Uh, definitely, uh, so that will be the first component, uh, uh, acute phase tests. Um, the second component will be the proof of myocardial damage. We need uh, um, uh, to verify that patient is having an infection or specifically myocardium. Uh, and for that, we need to pay attention to the uh, level of myocardial enzymes, uh, like something simple, like it may be just well, uh, aspirin, uh, aspirin transaminase, uh, alanine transaminase uh, in lesser degree. Uh, there may be uh, elevation of LDH, so tetrahydrokinase. Uh, creatine phosphokinase, CPK. Uh, but definitely a better taste for cardiac proteins, for uh, proteins that will determine the contractility of the heart, that will be the uh, cardiac troponins. Troponin I, troponin T, mm, uh, these proteins will be more specific for uh, myocardial damage. We're talking about those enzymes, when we're talking about myocardial function, but not matter, no matter what is the, the, the cause, what, what is the, the mechanism of myocardial damage, uh, if cardiomyocytes are destroyed, uh, enzymes from those, from those cells and uh, uh, proteins, uh, contractility proteins from those cells uh, will go outside and will be elevated in patient's blood serum. And sometimes, again, if possible, we need uh, well, to, to look for etiology uh, of, of, uh, of the virus. Uh, we can use PCR for, for viral genome. Mm, uh, uh, we can look for uh, antibody titers that will be elevated in the patient starting from the uh, uh, typically second week uh, of, of uh, um, uh, viral disease. So it may be antibodies against Exaki virus, maybe antibodies against HIV virus, cytomegalovirus, um, antibodies, uh, 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 antibodies may be detected in blood serum. Uh, uh, EBV, Epstein-Bind uh, virus may affect myocardium, it may be hepatitis viruses and some other viruses known for, um, for myocardial damage. Uh, please remember that in many cases, uh, some virus antiviral antibodies like anti uh, SMV, CMV, sorry, uh, EBV, uh, those antibodies may be present in absolutely healthy patients. So the, those viruses are abundant well in, in, the, 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 uh, uh, in the society, in the population. And uh, if you'll find out, for instance, antibody against cytomegalovirus, uh, especially if they will be IgG, antibodies or against epstein uh, bar virus, it could mean that patient just will had a contact uh, to that virus and it uh, does not mean uh, ongoing uh, viral, uh, viral disease. A biopsy of, of myocardium. Uh, I told you that sometimes it's vitally important to understand how to treat patient. Whether you should well, adjust well treatment for progressing heart failure, whether you should well, uh, uh, well, increase doses um, uh, of the drugs or whether you should well, uh, compensate the, the ongoing uh, um, uh, decompensation of, 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 of the, the ventricle and immediately patient into the too late and patients have, um, is having no severe decompensation in uh, typically less uh, circular circulation yet. Therefore, therefore, uh, um, uh, uh, if you suspect uh, genetic disease, you may take uh, endomyocardial biopsy. Uh, in some cases, cardiomyopathy. In that case, uh, a biopsy will be taken. And if, it, uh, if it's myocarditis, you'll see plenty of lymphocytes. Uh, sometimes there'll be uh, some plasma cells, but typically there is a huge lymphocytic infiltration uh, of cardiac myocytes and signs of ongoing destruction of, of, of the cardiac muscle. Um, so uh, if we talk about uh, etiology of the heart failure, etiology of the cardiomyopathies as a syndrome, 
uh, uh, in that case, definitely, uh, we need to, uh, to point that in most of the cases, uh, the etiology of cardiomyopathy is uh, um, quite obvious. It's coronary artery disease. Uh, um, it's uh, 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 ischemic heart disease in most of the cases, or syndromatic coronary failure, for instance, in patient with severe hypertrophy of the myocardium. That's most important. Uh, uh, other causes um, should also be, be taken into account. Uh, um, systemic hypertension, that is high blood pressure. Uh, that is important, and there may be significant overlap uh, in systemic hypertension and coronary artery disease. Um, Barrelar heart disease definitely will result in development of the heart failure in the myocardial disease. Um, alcohol. That may be alcoholic myocarditis, or it may be alcoholic myocardial dystrophy. Mm, uh, HL fibrillation, again, as a syndrome, uh, as something that may be related to alcohol, uh, to viral heart disease, mm, to coronary artery disease. So if we talk about that uh, state as a syndrome, that will be, again, uh, some 4 to 5% of the population. Uh, there may be some rare causes, uh, uh, unfortunately, in many cases, um, uh, we are talking about uh, idiopathic disease that will require uh, cardiac transplantation, and uh, uh, undetermined will be uh, unsure what is the origin of uh, uh, affection of myocardium will be in 13% of population. So still, in many cases, uh, we cannot establish the cause. Uh, according to definition, heart failure is a pathophysiologic state uh, in which uh, abnormality in myocardial function is responsible for a uh, failure of the heart to uh, pump the blood at the rate uh, that will uh, commensurate with requirements of metabolic tissues. Or it may be done, uh, but only from the level of the abnormally elevated uh, uh, diastolic volume. In both of the cases, when there will be just well, direct failure or um, the, the uh, normal um, the pumping function will be associated to increase diastolic volume, you'll say that patient is having the syndrome of the heart failure. Um, in many cases, it will be exclusively affected, it will be associated exclusively to affection of the myocardium. So in that case, you'll say that patients having uh, myocardial failure and uh, that may be the uh, result of primary abnormality of the cardiac muscle. That will be the uh, genetic cardiomyopathy, or it may be myocarditis, or it will be the myocardial failure, but it will be secondary. It will be due to um, uh, coronary artery disease, it may be due to valvular heart disease, or it may be due to some other causes uh, like myocardial dystrophy. Uh, definitely, the, the uh, risk of development of heart failure will progress with the, the age of the patient, uh, mostly due to a uh, high rate of development of coronary artery disease in elderly population, population over 55 years old. Mm, you'll see more and more development uh, of uh, the, 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 the um, heart failure as a syndrome. And the heart failure is quite important uh, uh, cause for development of uh, some lethal, complica uh, lethal complications. So uh, survival, uh, five-year survival from heart failure is quite well comparable to survival of the patient, for instance, with colorectal cancer, breast cancer, prostatic cancer, mm, uh, uh, and significantly higher, for instance, uh, uh, in comparison to survival of patients with pancreatic and pulmonary cancer. When we talk about uh, heart failure, we need to, to discuss what will be the components uh, that will determine the, the cardiac output. First of all, uh, something simple that you should know from, from normal physiology, that cardiac output, output will be determined by the heart rate multiplied through the stroke volume. And stroke volume will be determined mostly by preload by amount of the blood that, that, that will go towards the heart, uh, and by the uh, myocardial left or right ventricular contractility. Uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, there will be the factor that will uh, decrease 
stroke volume of the heart, uh, that will be the resistance, the peripheral resistance uh, that will be uh, uh, determined by the state of uh, um, uh, arteries in the greater or less circular circulation. Uh, that will be the afterload. The greater will be the afterload, the greater will be the, the peripheral resistance, uh, the less will be the, the, the uh, cardiac output. I uh, told you uh, at uh, our first classes uh, that uh, there is a Frank Sterling curve uh, that will determine uh, the uh, intensity of, of the contraction, uh, potency of the contraction in relation of the uh, ventricular feeding. The more will be the blood uh, uh, in the ventricle, for instance, uh, the higher will be the left ventricular and diastolic pressure that will um, uh, definitely will, 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 will be dependent upon the amount of blood in the, let's say, left ventricle, the higher will be the ventricular stroke volume. Uh, that is true, and uh, uh, there is a Frank Sterling law. But the point is that Frank Sterling law will uh, act in different way, in different conditions. So uh, we can uh, draw one curve of interrelation of the, the volume of the left ventricle and stroke volume, and therefore the uh, systolic pressure in aorta uh, for healthy patient. There'll be another curve in the same patient in the case of uh, adrenergic stimulation, if there'll be over-release of catechular mines. In that case, same volume, same degree of ventricular distension will result uh, in higher pressure that will be produced by the ventricle. Mm, that's why the adrenergic stimulation uh, is uh, uh, one of the compensatory mechanisms uh, that uh, works uh, normally, but unfortunately it may affect uh, the, the, the function of the patient's heart if it will be severely damaged. We'll talk about that a bit later. So uh, normally it should be the compensatory mechanism. It should, uh, well, it is designed as a factor that will increase the stroke uh, on volume and the work index of the ventricle. But if ventricle is severely damaged, it may uh, cause rather progression of the heart failure than uh, improve blood supply to the peripheral organs. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, there may be some states like inflammation of the myocardium, uh, dystrophy of the myocardium, um, toxic injury of the myocardium that will cause depressed cardiac function. And again, in that case, same volume, same degree of the feeling will result in significantly lesser uh, uh, pressure in, in, in aorta for the left ventricle. And uh, even lower response to distension will result in acute heart failure. So we can call that depressed cardiac function uh, chronic heart failure, and that will be the acute heart failure. Mm, uh, uh, and you see that in the case of acute damage, there will be significantly less response to distension than uh, even in the, in the case of chronic situation. Well, so what will be the, the uh, basic components in cardiac physiology? Uh, what will uh, what will be uh, the basic factors that will be modified in the, in the case of, of the heart failure? Uh, so that will be definitely the, the uh, feeling pressure that is the, the preload. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be uh, um, uh, uh, increased in a patient. Uh, with a heart failure, but it may cause rather overload of, 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 of the left ventricle. And uh, um, this factor may be uh, associated to significant clinical symptoms, uh, symptoms of congestion uh, in uh, the, the, the previous stage of the heart, for instance, if we talk about left ventricle in the lesser circular circulation or in the greater for the right ventricle. Uh, arterial impedance, the peripheral resistance afterload, that may be the significant factor that will result in aggravation uh, of the heart failure because if it will increase, mm, uh, this should be the, the factor that uh, should maintain uh, blood pressure uh, in, in the periphery, mm, uh, should maintain normal supply of the blood. Uh, but uh, 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 in the case of severe damage of the, the myocardial contraction, in, in the case of severe heart failure, um, it will result uh, in, in ischemia of the vitally important organs like kidneys, like brain, and, and other organs.
uh, and cardiac output. Um, now there may be the compensatory responses like activation of sympathetic system that again uh, will result uh, uh, in increased vascular resistance and ischemia of the periphery. Same may happen in the case of, of activation of renin uh, angiotensin aldosterone system. Mm, the system will be activated uh, in the case of renal ischemia, and that system uh, will, will result in the retention of the fluid. Activation of uh, uh, renin, uh, uh, action of the aldosterone, will result uh, in increased tone, increased tension of the peripheral arteries, increased resistance, uh, it will increase, imp increase impedance and, and uh, may result in aggravation of the heart value. Uh, uh, there may be retention of sodium, retention of water I already mentioned. And uh, there may be uh, uh, increased absorption of sodium in proximal tubules and there may be also release of antidiuretic hormone increasing the peripheral volume. Uh, what conditions will affect uh, uh, systolic dysfunction that will result in, uh, uh, in the heart failure and uh, uh, which conditions may result in uh, diastolic dysfunction when patient will have preserved ejection fraction? Let's start with uh, uh, systolic dysfunction. Uh, that may be the impaired conductivity. Uh, While well, patient may have, uh, for instance, myocardial infarction, patient may have some transient myocardial ischemia. Uh, there may be volume overload, so patient will have uh, just extra amount of blood that will circulate in between cardiac cavities, like uh, in the case of Marshall or in the case of uh, aortic regurgitation. Uh, patient may have a dilated cardiomyopathy, and again, in that case, uh, there will be uh, uh, impaired systolic function in, in patient's heart um, that will reduce ejection fraction in the patient, uh, uh, and patient will have uh, systolic dysfunction. In that case, the patient will be unable to maintain uh, uh, normal output. Uh, there will be decreased systolic blood pressure. Uh, in some of the cases, systolic dysfunction will be associated to overly increased afterload. That will be the chronic pressure uh, uh, overload in any patient, mm, uh, uh, for instance, in the case of severe aortic stenosis. There will be a block uh, in the, the, the uh, very outlet of the ventricle, and uh, no matter that left ventricular muscle will be absolutely normal, uh, that will prevent normal uh, output of the, of the patient's heart, of the patient's left ventricle, uh, uh, due to uh, increased overload inside the heart. And uh, from the point of view of the body in general, that again uh, will, will, be, uh, uh, will result in systolic dysfunction. Or sometimes patient may have just severe uncontrolled hypertension. Again, the afterload in the periphery in the, the uh, arteries of the, of the greater circular circulation will be as high a pressure um, that will result in impairment of systolic function. And uh, uh, that may be the, the, the uh, possible cause for development uh, uh, of uh, reduced ejection fraction. Uh, diastolic dysfunction. Uh, that is uh, the inability of, of the ventricle, for instance, left ventricle, uh, to feel, to receive normal amount of blood, normal volume of blood. Uh, uh, left ventricle may be, uh, for instance, too thick, there will be extra hypertrophy of the left ventricle. And uh, in, in that case, uh, uh, well, the, the constant hypertrophy will prevent normal amount of blood that, that will enter the left, left ventricle in the diastole. It may be restrictive cardiomyopathy. There will be over proliferation uh, of uh, endocardium of the left ventricle. Uh, endocardium will be too rigid and will prevent uh, left ventricular myocardium uh, uh, from dilation and from receiving normal amount, normal volume of blood uh, from the atrium. It may be myocardial fibrosis. So fibrosis, not of endocardium, but of the heart muscle itself. For instance, patient had uh, radiation exposure, and in that case, uh, the, 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 there will be uh, myocardial fibrosis. Mm, transit uh, uh, myocardial ischemia 
um, result in inability of, of the left ventricle to, to dilate properly, dilate in response to the volume of blood that, that will go from the, uh, let's say, left atrium. Um, uh, again, impaired filter. but outside of the heart, uh, uh, in the pericardial sac, there will be too high uh, volume of the fluid. Uh, there will be pericardial tamponade, heart will be compressed from outside, and uh, that will prevent normal feeling of, of the ventricles. In that case, definitely both left and right. Well, uh, so pathophysiology of the congestive heart failure is quite complex. Um, factors that will uh, cause increased uh, cardiac output um, uh, will uh, include uh, uh, impaired preload, increased uh, afterload, and decreased contactility, as we already discussed. Uh, in response to that, uh, there will be multiple changes. There will be uh, a decreased effective arterial blood volume. Uh, that uh, will activate renal compensatory changes, renal compensatory mechanisms. Uh, uh, and those mechanisms uh, that are designed to, to normalize um, blood circulation, the overproduction of renin, angiotensin, aldosterone, uh, antidiuretic hormone, um, uh, or so some hemodynamic changes that is uh, decreased renal blood flow or impaired glomerular filtration rate. And unfortunately, uh, we'll switch on mechanisms like reabsorption of sodium uh, or decreased water clearance uh, that may uh, result in the vicious circle and progression uh, of the uh, myocardial failure because they will, on one hand, uh, will, will increase afterload and sometimes may, may decrease preload of the heart. Uh, uh, sympathetic nervous system, uh, sinus tachycardia that will develop again, that is something that should be the compensating mechanism because a cardiac output is a heart rate multiplied to stroke volume. Uh, sinus uh, tachycardia should be the factor uh, uh, that will uh, increase cardiac output, but tachycardia means that diastoles will become shorter. And shorter diastoles means uh, uh, the, the, the longer period of physiological ischemia of the heart that again uh, may result in progression of myocardial disease. Uh, by the constriction, by the constriction will increase after lot, uh, will uh, support blood pressure, but unfortunately uh, it will increase impedance and uh, will, will increase after load that may result in progression of heart failure. Uh, sympathetic uh, nervous system overactivation will increase uh, that will uh, improve uh, cardiac function, but unfortunately, uh, it will be associated to other uh, um, damaging factors, and therefore, in most of the cases, we need to prevent that, no matter that uh, there may be uh, some kind of increase in conductivity. And again, well, uh, overtension of the, or, or the fluid, uh, increased capillary hydrostatic pressure, unfortunately, will result uh, in not only in development of symptoms like edema, like accumulation of fluid uh, uh, in parenchymatous organs, in subcutaneous fat, but also will increase peripheral resistance, will result in overload of the heart. I think we'll skip that slide. Uh, again, we already discussed that. Um, uh, that slide shows the effects of sympathetic nervous system, the increased uh, rate of uh, reabsorption of sodium, uh, vasoconstriction, uh, the, the hypertrophy of the blood vessels, uh, that is uh, the, the irreversible and uh, well, the vasoconstriction may be blocked by, by drugs. You cannot uh, um, reverse invert hypertrophy of, of, of the, the resistance blood vessels. And there will be a lot of issues associated to the, the, the um, uh, effect of sympathetic hormones on the heart muscle. Unfortunately, in many cases, uh, there will be damaging. There may be impairment of systolic and diastolic function and, and the development of arrhythmias. Mm, uh, for an angiotensin system, that is a system uh, that may result in development of, uh, again, increased peripheral resistance. So again, in most of the cases, we need to block 
by uh, uh, all our drugs, by diuretic drugs, uh, by blockers of angiotensin receptor. Uh, we need to prevent factors uh, that will uh, increase sodium retention, that will uh, result in vasoconstriction and uh, may uh, also cause overproduction of aldosterone. Good. Now talking about types of myocardial failure, I told you that there may be two basic types. Uh, that may be the systolic heart failure, uh, when heart will be unable to maintain normal systolic blood pressure in, uh, uh, let's say, for, for the left ventricle uh, in, in aorta in greater circulation. Or maybe the diastolic heart failure, when pa uh, patient's heart will be unable to relax uh, and the ventricles will be unable to receive normal amount of blood. Uh, that's shown here. Uh, uh, Again, it's mostly relevant for the left ventricle when the myocardium will be either too thick or there will be too stiff uh, endocardium that will prevent relaxation of the uh, left ventricle uh, or uh, there will be extensive compression uh, of the heart uh, due to accumulation of fluid or, or sometimes sclerosing of the pericardium. Uh, what will be the difference in manifestations of systolic and diastolic heart failure? That's important. Please pay attention to that because in our tests, in our uh, well uh, exams that will be at the end of the semester, at the uh, end of the year, now when you'll pass exam propedeutics, I'll ask you specifically about the features of systolic and diastolic heart failure. So uh, that's uh, very important. Uh, for systolic heart failure, a uh, patient in their case typically will have a large and overdilated heart. There will be over accumulation of fluid, there will be a larger high diastolic and there will be high end systolic volume. Uh, in the case of diastolic heart failure, in many cases patient will have a small cavity of the ventricle and typically that will be the, the result of concentric left ventricular hypertrophy, not always. Uh, uh, but point is that the patient should have small cavity of the ventricle. Um, now for the blood pressure, typically uh, if there will be systolic uh, heart failure, obviously there should be low blood pressure. In rare cases, it may be normal, but it should not be high. Uh, uh, for diastolic heart failure, the patient typically will have systemic hypertension, but again, not always. So uh, it's not consistent sign, but typically patients have hypertension in that case. Uh, systolic heart failure is quite common. Uh, it's uh, more common than diastolic heart failure. Uh, typically, it will be associated to broad uh, age group. It's more common in male uh, patients just because it's a uh, classical complication of coronary artery disease, of uh, atherosclerotic disorders, of uh, myocardial sclerosis associated to deposition of cholesterol in myocardium. It may be associated to alcohol abuse. Uh, for diastolic heart failure, uh, it's more typical for women, especially for elderly women, uh, if we talk about, for instance, genetic cardiomyopathies. Uh, low ejection fraction, uh, uh, it's obvious, and that will be the basic marker. So if you send patient for ECG, uh, echo uh, CG. Uh, the basic feature that will be assessed uh, uh, in that case will be the decrease in the ejection fraction of the left ventricle. So everybody knows about that. And uh, if you presume that your patient's having some kind of myocardial failure, uh, obviously most, uh, in most of the cases, most of the doctors will look for that line but it will not work for patients with diastolic heart failure. Uh, that classical parameter in the ECG will not be working for patients with diastolic heart failure. Those patients may have normal or increased ejection fraction because the cavity of the ventricle will be too low and in comparison to low diastolic filling, the ejection fraction may be even increased uh, um, well, as it, it, it may, may be calculated by the, the age and the size of the patient's body. So uh, uh, this feature will not be working for patients with diastolic heart failure, that's important. Uh, talking about the uh, auscultative data of the patient, uh, um, systolic heart failure typically will be associated to dystrophy with myocardium. And that will result in a third heart sound, 
as the gallop and the patient. Uh, uh, there will be low elasticity and uh, uh, impaired uh, um, uh, association of the degree of dilation of the left ventricle uh, to the amount of blood that will enter the ventricle uh, during the diastole. So that will be the um, mechanism of development of third cardiac sound. Uh, patients with diastolic issue uh, will have earlier, much earlier than patients with systolic heart, fa heart failure, development of fourth heart sound. The point is that, that both patients with systolic and diastolic heart failure may have S3, S4, but in the case of systolic, earlier finding will be development of third heart sound, uh, third heart sound. Uh, our fourth cardiac sound will be the, the uh, earlier in uh, diastolic heart failure. Um, in the case of diastolic heart failure, if um, uh, the, the ventricle uh, size, the ventricle will be too tight um, uh, and will be unable, uh, will, will be incompetent to receive normal amount of blood, that will result in overload for the atrium and patient will develop, uh, uh, will develop uh, um, uh, increased um, oscillatory events, uh, more intensive uh, vibrations of the atrial wall during the uh, atrial systole. A uh, patient in systolic heart failure will have a systolic and diastolic impairment during the ECG. Uh, diastolic impairment uh, will be the only finding in the case of diastolic heart failure. Uh, please remember that treatment will be well established to be diuretic drugs, uh, um, uh, angiotensin receptor blockers, uh, or uh, angiotensin converting enzymes inhibitors, and so on for systolic heart failure. And treatment will not be established except for cardiac transplantation in the case of diastolic heart failure. Uh, patients uh, with systolic heart failure will have poor prognosis. Uh, if you'll be able to transplant the heart in time, uh, uh, the prognosis will be good, but uh, it will be poor if uh, uh, you start treating your patient um, already when patient you will have obvious symptoms and signs of the heart failure. Uh, please remember that in most of the cases, uh, um, systolic heart failure is associated to myocardial ischemia. Uh, ischemia may be common in diastolic heart failure, but in that case, it will be rather secondary finding, secondary uh, um, event than the cause of disease. Uh, for the causes of the heart failure, uh, it may be intrinsic. Uh, that will be the genetic or cardiomyopathies. In that case, it will be primary. Or it may be uh, the, the affection of myocardium in, in the coronary artery disease or maybe infiltrative diseases or heart will suffer in response to some, some systemic events. It may be too high blood pressure in, in the, 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 the arteries, which may have hypertension. It may be pressure overload in, in the case of stenosis or aortic or pulmonic valves, or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy again with overload, uh, uh, with, with a block of uh, ejection. It may be increased stroke volume, not pressure, but volume overload. Patient may have uh, variable insufficiency or, uh, for instance, left to right chance. Uh, patient may have, again, initially absolutely normal heart, but excess workload will be associated to so-called high output states. There will be just increased demands uh, for the heart, increased demands for blood supply in the periphery. When patient will have, for instance, thyrotoxicosis. Mm, thyroid hormones will uh, uh, significantly increase um, uh, production of, of heat, increase production of protein, uh, and will significantly decrease efficacy of, of, of metabolism. Uh, in that case, definitely there will be increased demands uh, for, for cardiac activity. Patient may have, uh, in that case, uh, affection of myocardium due to uh, increased demands for the heart. Same may be in the case of anemia. CV in anemia means so that uh, um, the, the, the um, uh, volume of blood that will be pumped by the blood will carry on uh, less uh, hemoglobin, less oxygen. Uh, there will be less delivery of the oxygen nutrients to the body. And uh, that may be the cause for development uh, of heart failure. 
pregnancy again, uh, increased load for the heart uh, due to presence of the fetus in the body or fistula. Uh, Yetogenic myocardial disease may happen. For instance, you may use some drugs um, uh, uh, for the treatment of, of cancer or for, for suppression of immunity uh, that may be toxic for the heart. Uh, or there may be the, the, the other medications like uh, diazepiramide um, that may uh, affect myocardium and may cause toxicity. A uh, similar mechanism will be in the case of uh, radiation, uh, radiation therapy that will be the uh, sclerosing of, of, the, of the myocardium. Uh, precipitating factors. Um, please remember that uh, most of the cases that you listed uh, as, as some uh, exogenous um, states, states associated to the excess workload, may develop in a patient with pre existing disease. Patient may have some kind of well, chronic uh, compensated heart failure uh, that was uh, asymptomatic or, or low symptomatic. And uh, in the case of uh, um, some kind of infection uh, that will be associated to fever, um, uh, to uh, again increased uh, uh, demand of the body and blood supply, uh, and the patient may develop uh, some kind of uh, decompensation of, of that, that value, and uh, these situations may induce symptoms. So please be aware that if your patients have pre existing heart disease, uh, those situations may precipitate development of, of uh, symptoms and precipitate decompensation of initially asymptomatic heart disease. Uh, this sometimes may be uh, something that will increase circulating volume uh, of fluid, circulating volume of the blood, uh, that will be the increased preload. A uh, patient, due to some reasons, may start uh, 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 taking more sodium, more sodium chloride. Uh, it may be excessive fluid administration, again, it may be a function, it's treatment of infection. Uh, uh, and uh, you think that, you, uh, that you're doing patient good, infusing more and more fluid, trying, for instance, to, to, to remove some toxins or, or well, uh, cytokines from the body, but that uh, over administration of the intravenous fluid uh, may result in the development of uh, heart failure decompensation. Or patient may develop uh, renal disease and heart failure due to that. Um, there may be some conditions that may increase uh, afterload. Uh, patient, for instance, may stop taking uh, antihypertensive drugs and uh, develop uncontrolled hypertension. Uh, or patient may develop, uh, well, uh, thrombosis of the peripheral veins uh, and develop uh, pulmonary embolism. Uh, there may be some conditions that may impair contractility. For instance, uh, action of negative anthropic med medications, myocardial ischemia, or, or uh, intake of uh, ethanol. Mm, sometimes patients may just well, stop, uh, take some time drugs that will be prescribed for treatment of the heart failure, or there may be some medications that, that will uh, uh, result in development of excessive bradycardia. Bradycardia sometimes is beneficial, and sometimes you, uh, that may be one of the goals of treatment of the heart failure. But uh, if you will overdose uh, those medications, that may be also bad for the patient. Uh, what will be the criteria for diagnosing of congestive heart failure in general? So if we talk about well, uh, um, uh, heart failure, that may encompass both right and left-sided heart failure. Uh, major criteria will include uh, praxismal attacks of dyspnea or autopnea, may be dyspnea or coughing on exertion. Um, it may be a distension of the neck veins. If we talk about left side, uh, side heart, uh, heart failure, it may be presence of rails, cardiomegaly, attacks of acute pulmonary edema, gallop with third heart sound, uh, increased venous heart failure, uh, and increased uh, over um, 16 centimeters of water. By the way, please remember how should we measure uh, physically, non-invasively, um, venous pressure and presence of the hydrothorax. Those will be the major criteria. Minor criteria that should be also counted will be presence of ankle edema, uh, night coughing, hepatomegaly, um, uh, uh, presence of pleural effusion, uh, uh, vital capacity that will be reduced by one third from the maximum for the patient, from the ideal, tachycardia uh, with the rate of over 120 
uh, bits per minute. And the uh, criteria that may be sometimes major or minor is a uh, weight loss over 4.5 kilograms within five days in response to treatment. So that's very important. Uh, that are uh, one of the ways to monitor edema, gain or loss of, of uh, uh, all the weight in the patient, in the patient with heart failure. And uh, if you start eating your patient and patient will rapidly lose his or her weight, definitely that's not due to treatment of obesity. It's due to uh, a resolution of edema. So that is also important uh, uh, to, to pay attention if you try to diagnose uh, congestive heart failure. So to establish definite diagnosis of uh, uh, chronic heart failure, you need to have uh, uh, two major components, two major criterions, criteria. Now, on one major and two uh, uh, minor criteria. Uh, talking about uh, selectively uh, left ventricular heart failure, sorry, uh, uh, for the left, symptoms that we need to take into account uh, will be dyspnea, autopnea, especially what is especially important, please remember that's a very sensitive and very important marker, will be the uh, paroxysmal attacks uh, of nocturnal dyspnea. If patient will try to lie down uh, at night time to sleep, a patient may be awakened due to breathlessness. Um, attacks of acute pulmonary edema, uh, uh, severe fatigue, uh, weakness, uh, decreased workload uh, on exertion, and nocturia again as a symptom of diffuse widespread edema syndrome. Talking about signs, definitely enlargement, dilation of the heart. If we talk about left ventricular, definitely uh, uh, leftwards. Mm, there will be displacement of the apex beat to the left, down. Um, uh, 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 there will be a decreased intensity of the apex beat. Patient may develop particular heave. Uh, you may hear a third cardiac sound if we talk about systolic heart failure and fourth uh, cardiac sound. That may be the late marker in the case of systolic and early marker in the case of diastolic heart failure. Definitely, in the little bit of congestion in the lesser circle, patient you will have rails, crackles. And there may be chain stocks, respiration, tachycardia as a compensatory mechanism, and definitely you need to treat that, you need to block that. Sometimes uh, there may be arrhythmia with pulses autonance, and the uh, uh, chamber hypertrophy will be verified by ECOCG or by uh, uh, X-ray. Now, very important, uh, when we talk about heart failure, we need to uh, define two important features uh, that will characterize your patient uh, at the present state. First will be the stage of disease. Uh, from the point of view of, of progression uh, of, of, of a disorder and progression of the syndrome of the chronic heart failure uh, specifically. So um, uh, in that case, we are talking about, well, something that will go from the, the uh, lesser stage uh, to the greater stage and it cannot be uh, well, reversed, cannot be inverted. So the, the stage A uh, means that patients have just risk of the development of the heart failure, but there are no uh, developed structural cardiac dysfunction. So patient is having just well, something that may predispose for possibly having a uh, heart failure in the, the future. Just having coronary artery disease, and just having hypertension or a history of cardiomyopathy. Stage B means that that patient is having uh, structural cardiac disease um, uh, that is associated to the heart failure, but uh, no symptoms yet. Uh, stage C means uh, that patient is having symptoms um, uh, and uh, uh, that the uh, symptoms are either current or uh, the prior symptoms in the past history, and now patients are receiving, receiving treatment, that's why patients is, is having no symptoms at the, the present time. But symptoms were in, in the patient in, in the, the history. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, stage D means that the patient is having remodeling of the heart, uh, uh, and uh, patient symptoms are refractory. Uh, patient is receiving maximum medical therapy, but on the maximum therapy, patient is still having symptoms. 
uh, in that case, definitely there may be a need in cardiac transportation, but in many cases, unfortunately, it's too late to, to operate patient when patient is having uh, uh, refractory symptoms. Uh, classes. Classes means the functional state of the patient's heart. Uh, class may be inverted. Class uh, means that the, the uh, current description uh, of functional uh, disability of the patient. And definitely, a uh, functional class may progress and may go down uh, uh, under the treatment of the patient, under the treatment of the underlying disease. Mm, that is just a well, description of uh, well, how patient is cap capable of having of this or that physical load, physical activity. Uh, um, therefore, class means that if patient will have no symptoms and therefore no limitation of activity at the ordinary physical uh, physical load, that will be the uh, first functional class according to New York uh, um, Heart Association. Second class means that ordinary physical activity uh, is somewhat limited. For instance, uh, long distance walking is impossible. Uh, patient is unable to climb to two, uh, two flights of, of stairs. Uh, third class uh, is significant limitation. Um, exercise is limited by dyspnea, like short distance walking or climbing uh, wine, uh, one flight of stairs. And uh, fourth is uh, dyspnea at rest or with some insignificant exertion. Uh, same staging by grades may be done for uh, certain symptoms, uh, certain disorders like dyspnea. I don't think that we'll discuss that, that, that nowadays. That's done in the same way uh, uh, as uh, heart failure, um, uh, failure grades uh, um, that we discussed. Well, uh, heart, um, heart failure, uh, congestive heart failure means that your patients have an uh, a congestion in the periphery that is superficial jugal artery that is overloaded, meaning that patients have a right ventricular failure. Uh, there may be a positive uh, posture on those sign um, uh, or hepatic uh, jugular reflex. So if you'll press uh, over patient's abdomen, over epigastric area, over the right hypochondrium, uh, that will increase the distension of the patient's jugular, patient's neck veins. There is the same patient that they showed to you uh, with the neck, uh, severe edema, severe edema of the um, uh, lower extremities of the ankles. Patients having severe ascites uh, with an asaka. Uh, patients having uh, edema of the feet, meaning that edema is long standing. That's again, same patient uh, that are the, the pits after my fingers. And you see that uh, uh, feet are also edematous, so that is a marker of prolonged, uh, prolonged edema. Uh, at cardiac auscultation, we get third heart sound, a sound that will emerge typically within uh, 0.12 seconds after the second heart sound, that how you'll be able to differentiate that from, uh, from opponent's neck, for instance. Uh, and in the case of uh, diastolic dysfunction, a uh, patient will first develop fourth heart sound. That is important. Uh, but again, if there will be severe systolic dysfunction, long standing uh, systolic dysfunction will be both fourth uh, and third cardiac sounds. Um, uh, uh, symptoms we already discussed uh, for uh, left, uh, left ventricular failure, that will be the symptoms and manifestations of right ventricular failure. Uh, fatigue, dependent edema, enlargement of the liver, and if it will be rapid, liver will be um, uh, uh, painful. Uh, patient typically will have anorexia and bloating. Uh, for the physical signs, um, yeah, a dilation of the, um, uh, of the heart, of the rate of cardiac dullness rightwards, uh, due to right ventricular hypertrophy, uh, that will give patient right ventricular heave or precordial beat by both sides of the sternum. There will be increased pulsation. Uh, patient will have a right atrial gallop. Uh, there may be a, um, a third and or fourth um, uh, uh, heart sounds over the tricuspid uh, area or the base of the forward process. Uh, there may be murmurs related to incompetence of uh, tricuspid valve. 
there may be a, a jugular pulsation, positive jugular venous pulse due to tricuspid incompetence, pitting edema, ascites, and the combination of fluid in pleural uh, pericardial uh, cavity as well as with the uh, development of ascites. Uh, cardiac contactility may be evaluated by different means. Maybe the most precise uh, uh, and quite sophisticated will be to carry out MRI and receive three-dimensional presentation of the volume, for instance, of the left ventricle in the end diastole, that will be the end diastolic volume, and the end of systole, subtract one from another, and uh, that will be the uh, left ventricular uh, ejection fraction. Sometimes you'll use uh, uh, one-dimensional uh, measurement in the, the ECOCG, Again, by uh, movement of the, the, the heart muscle, it may be done, or you may use two dimensional presentation, and it may be the, the most common way. You may calculate ejection fraction if it will be less than uh, 67, 70. That means that the patient is having uh, decreased, uh, a decreased uh, ventricular contractility. Sometimes we use CT uh, with combined scintigraphy of myocardium, but that function, uh, that investigation will rather represent uh, uh, contractility of the ventricle, mm, uh, uh, supply of the ventricle by blood, uh, function of the myocardium, and that's important typically not to assess <coughs> the functional disorder, uh, but to assess the state of myocardium alone with, with the functional disorder because if there will be some kind of defects here, it means that, for instance, patients have a local uh, issue, and if it will be local, it's more typical for ischemic heart disease. If there will be decreased diffuse of uh, myocardial function, myocardial blood supply, uh, um, uh, myocardial metabolism, it means that patients have a diffuse myocardial disease, like myocardial dystrophy due to alcohol or myocarditis, or it may be genetic cardiomyopathy. Uh, uh, therefore, uh, in many cases, we can only say whether the affection is local, focal, or whether it's diffuse. And we cannot differentiate diffuse genetic requiring myocardial transportation from diffuse acquired, in, in, in which there will be no need in uh, uh, transportation of the heart. That's why uh, quite rarely we use investigations like uh, ASPECT. Uh, it may be useful, but quite rarely. That is another method of scintigraphy. Um, in that case, we can visualize the volume of the ventricle. And uh, in that case, along with decreased ventricular ejection fraction, we can also visual visualize kind of a pocket. Um, and that means that patients have a left ventricular aneurysm. Uh, uh, besides transportation, sometimes if transportation is impossible, you may do something to uh, improve uh, uh, diastolic function. Um, uh, the patient's myocardium will be the same, but if you'll uh, decrease the volume of the left ventricle, you, you'll shrink myocardium somehow. In that case, you may improve contractility, you may improve left ventricular uh, output in that case. So surgery like that may be uh, carried out, some kind of situs, some kind of well, limitation or extendability uh, of the left ventricle may be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will be uh, relatively less invasive for the patient. Uh, that will not be a SCV procedure. And patient will require no immune suppressive medications, low, no cytostatic medications. It will be still the uh, same patient's heart, uh, but you will significantly improve um, uh, myocardial function for some time. Definitely, that will not be forever. Uh, sometimes some uh, stem cells may be injected in, into myocardium and uh, that may somehow improve myocardial conductivity. Uh, transplantation of the heart will be uh, required in genetic cases uh, or rarely uh, in, in other causes in, uh, of uh, diffuse myocardial damage, but uh, only in the case if you'll diagnose the damage at the early stage. Good. Well, uh, that is all for today, uh, and that was our uh, last topic. Uh, so if you have some questions, please ask me. Uh, uh, please uh, uh, text me uh, again. You may uh, use Google Class if you'll um, decide what should be our topic uh, well after, uh, after next week. 
so uh, at 27th of May. So um, please remember that next class will be on May 27th, as we decided. Um, but uh, I want to know the topic. Uh, what do we wish uh, me to do? Mm, what should be the, 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 the discussion? What kind of? We can use well, any. Uh, uh, it can be devoted to multiple topics. You, you may, may ask me any topics, any questions. Uh, but if you wish to do well, any, anything specifically, I have to be prepared for that. Uh, for now, um, goodbye. Uh, that's all for today. So see you later. See you in uh, well, one week and a half. Uh, see you on May twenty seventh. Goodbye. <laughs>